when I was recording the discharge of the battery in the controller. I was getting watt hour readings around 5.2 to 5.3 watt hours. I thought those readings were a bit high, so I've set up to test my power readings. What I'm going to do is apply fixed voltage from a bench power supply, and the load will be a resistor. As long as the voltage stays constant and the resistors don't heat up much, I should end up with a constant voltage and current, so that will make for a constant power draw. For this test, I'm aiming for 120 milliamps at around the 4 volt level. Voltage is a little bit higher than I would like, but I'm going to go with this. I'll let it run a few hours and compare my readings to what I calculate should be the actual values. All these tests take hours, but at least I don't have to interact with this one. It can just sit there and run. Okay, I have a bit over 17 million milliseconds of data to look at. Since there are 3.6 million milliseconds in an hour, I'm going to look at blocks of data, 3.6 million points at a time. That will make sure the math is minimal. Here is a block at the very start of the test. My capture device is reading a little low on the voltage, but I think this meter is a little high. But again, I only have my own meters to compare to, and they all read within 10 millivolts, so I'm going to say close enough. And I have a milliwatt hour reading of 505, and I have a calculated value of 506.3 milliwatt hours. That is close. I think that means I have my math correct. Let me look at a couple more blocks of time. At about an hour in, it's still the same. That makes me feel good. And at around the 4 hour mark, power went down 0.1 milliwatt hour. Well, I think my voltage and current are pretty stable here. That really isn't much change. And way better than what I need. Of course, at this power level, there is almost no heating of the resistor load. Here, I'm aiming for 500 milliamps and I want it around 3.8 volts. Voltage is a little lower than I would like, but again, close enough. Current is showing 500, sometimes hitting 501, so probably the real current is a bit over 500 milliamps. Voltage looks very stable at 3.718 volts, and I'll let this run for at least a couple of hours. I ended up with only a little over two hours of data. Here is the data from the start of the test. Voltage is reading a little low. I say that, but I calibrated my device on the Fluke set in the high resolution mode. 3.709 volts might be correct, or 3.718 volts might be correct. More than likely, neither is absolutely correct, but I'm pretty confident I'm close here. Average current for the hour is reading 501 milliamps. The meter was reading 500 more than 501, but I'm looking at maybe a 500 microamp discrepancy here. Again, that will get the job done, plenty close enough. Here I have a 1.858 watt hour reading, and my calculated value is 1.859 watt hours. I think it's working well. Math seems to be good. Now this is close to the last hour of the test. Power went up to 1.860 watt hours, and the voltage did stay the same, or close to the same, but current did go up some. The meter started reading a constant 501 milliamps, and with a 502 reading every little bit. This is enough power to heat the resistor load, and I believe that is the cause of probably close to a 1 milliamp increase in current. But at this point, I believe my watt hour readings are very close to the actual power being moved. I only have two complete, all at the same time, discharge data sets. This one is about 9.5 hours in length. So if I use the time the controller is turned on till the time the controller shuts itself off, power delivered from the battery was 5.365 watt hours. I'm very confident that is well within 100 milliwatt hours of being the actual power the battery delivered. And I have this data. It's a little over 10 hours worth. I wasn't as diligent with this one, so the controller did shut off from non-use one time. It's hard to find a 10 hour window to play a video game. Again, using the power on time of the controller till the controller shuts itself off due to low battery. I have a 5.217 watt hour reading. A little less than the previous run, but the cutoff voltage of the controller was a little bit higher for this run. And a cutoff voltage difference of just a few millivolts could easily account for 100 or so milliwatt hours. I will put a link in the description for this battery. As a replacement battery, it looks pretty good. 
I think it was like $22 for a two-pack. I don't see $11 each as a bad price, as that can include free shipping. And the little kit came with a screwdriver and spudger, everything you need to replace the battery. The OEM Sony battery has a 5.7 watt hour rating, 3.65 volts at 1.560 amp hours. This replacement battery has a 9.7 watt hour rating, 3.65 volts at 2.65 amp hours. I'll say a bit here about the watt hour rating of batteries. First, I trust them a lot less than I can throw them. On top of that, the charge cutoff voltage and the discharge cutoff voltage will have a very large effect on the watt hour rating of the battery. If this replacement battery was charged to its max of 4.25 volts and discharged to a cell life shortening value of 2.5 volts, would it supply 9.7 watt hours? I am thinking of including a test like this for the batteries. Maybe I'll call it the just how much am I fibbing power test. That charge and discharge level would be very detrimental to the life of the battery, but it would give the maximum watt hour that could be claimed for the battery. And in my opinion, the watt hour rating on the battery should always be less than what would be shown using a 4.25 to 2.5 volt range. Of course, the most important power rating for a battery review for the DualSense will be the power delivered between the DualSense charge cutoff and discharge cutoff. That is the power that is usable by the DualSense controller. So that will be the primary focus. But I don't see any reason not to include other tests that might be interesting. Much more to come, so hit that subscribe button and thank you for watching.